Hello, my name is Dr. Seema Shah Fairbank, and in this video I will cover hydraulic structures. At the end of this video, you will be able to define and calculate flows over and through hydraulic structures such as weirs and orifices. A weir is basically an obstruction in an open channel flow path. The flow rate is determined based on the energy equation. Weir are commonly used for measurement of flow rates. They function by causing water to rise above the obstruction in order to flow over the weir. The height of the water above the obstruction correlates with the flow rate. So that measurement of the height of the water above the top of the weir can be used to determine the flow rate by either an equation, graph, or table. The top of the weir, which is used as a reference level for the height of the water flowing over it, is called the crest of the weir. As flows travel over the weir, the flow experiences draw down. This occurs because the flows accelerate over the weir, pulling the flows down. The term nape is used for the sheet of water flowing over the weir. When flows over a weir are free flowing, as shown in the image, an air pocket will form under the nape. The velocity of the approach is equal to the discharge, Q, divided by the cross-sectional area of the flow at a head measuring station, which is 2.5 times H upstream of the weir. This location is chosen because it is not affected by the drawdown effect. Accurate measurements of flow rate is not possible when weirs are submerged. Thus, our entire conversation will be based on free-flowing weirs. The flow rate can be calculated is equal to two-thirds times the coefficient of discharge times the quantity 2g gravity square rooted times the perpendicular length of the weir, times the height of the water above the crest, measure 2.5 times h upstream, raised to the power x. Through experiments, you can determine various types of coefficient of discharge and x's to be able to solve various weirs. The most typical types of weirs that we will discuss are sharp crested weir and broad crested weirs. A sharp crested weir consists of a horizontal plate with a sharp edge at the top of the crest. This weir is placed in an open channel so that water can flow over the crest and drop into a pool. The first type of weir that we will discuss is a rectangular sharp crested weir. The coefficient of discharge CD is equal to 0 0.602 plus 0 0.083 times H divided by P, where H is the height above the weir and P is the height of the weir itself, where X, the coefficient, is 1.5 five for a rectangular weir. The next type of sharp crested weir is a Chopoletti weir, which is a trapezoidal weir. For a standard Chopoletti weir, the horizontal to vertical ratio is 0.25 to one. That means the side slope Z is 0.25. The coefficient of discharge is 0.63 and X is 1.5. <clears throat> Next type of sharp crested weir is the V-notch weir. The V-notch weir can come in various angles. We can have a 60 degree and a 90 degree. For a 60 degree weir, the coefficient of discharge is 0 0.46 with an X of 2.5. And for a 90 degree weir, the coefficient of discharge is 0.8 with a x of 2.5. You should note that a 90 degree weir will allow more flow to pass through it than a 60 degree weir. 
This can be noted with the higher coefficient of discharge, which will result in a larger flow rate. A broad crested weir has a much larger span. The general weir equation is slightly modified to be the flow rate is equal to the coefficient of the weir times the perpendicular length of the weir times h to the 1.5 power. For a broad crested weir, it is really important to evaluate the breadth of the weir. The breadth of the weir is the length of the weir, which makes it broad crested. If we had a broad crested weir that had a breadth of two feet and we had a height of 2.5 feet, we would get a coefficient of a weir coefficient of 3.07. This is very important in understanding how to evaluate broad crested weirs. Next, we have an orifice. An orifice is a small opening on the side or bottom of a tank. Water will flow through the orifice, allowing the ability to measure the flow rate. The opening of the orifice can be circular, triangular, or rectangular. There can be one or multiple openings. The following image provides a graphic of the theoretical overview of an orifice. You are given a tank where the flows are open to the atmosphere at the top. And as the water leaves through the opening, it too is open to the atmosphere. By applying the total energy equation, one can determine the flow rate going through the orifice. The flow rate is equal to the coefficient of discharge times the area of the orifice times the square root of two times gravity times the difference in height from the bottom of the tank to the top of the free water surface minus the bottom of the tank to the center of the orifice. It is really important that the measurement of H1 is taken to the center of the orifice to get an accurate flow rate leaving the tank. Real world examples include a detention basin or reservoir or dam which has a riser. A riser is a large pipe that is connected to a storm drain or a channel downstream. The pipe has a small opening that controls the flows leaving the basin. The following schematic shows a top view and cross-sectional view of a detention basin. Note that the flows leaving the riser go through the orifice and down the pipe. The change in depth is the total depth in the basin minus the depth to the center of the orifice. The second example is a roadway curb inlet. If the flows are above the opening of the inlet, the flow is submerged resulting in orifice flow. The depth is the difference in the total depth minus the depth to the center of the opening. These are great examples of orifices. We will continue with doing hydraulic design and applications of these various hydraulic structures. Hopefully the theory behind weirs and orifice allow you to better understand how flow rates can be determined.